So here's Monster. It looks like she's having uh, open heart surgery at the moment, really, doesn't it? So the valve cover area is nice and clean now. I've also electrical taped up any bits that were exposed from the cabling over the last day. Um, down here, I have my cleaning corner, uh, where the air box and the battery holder throttle body is. I've really given that a good clean, but I will be getting some uh, car cleaners today um, to go over this before I reinstall it. So first, I'm just going to sketch in my Haynes manual um, just a brief diagram so I can make a note of the clearance values against the correct valves. So obviously I want to draw these as hearts because I love my bike so much. So they can be the exhaust valves and these can be the inlet valves. And I've already made a note of what the valve clearances should be. Um, in the Haynes manual, they do actually differ to what they should be. So I've made a note already, um, which I'll, I'll rewrite because it's a bit of a scribble now. But in the Haynes manual, for example, the intake was originally um, 0.1 to 0.15 mil clearance. But since then, it has been amended. It's always worth having a look online just to see if that's the case. So it's now 0.03 to 0.11. Um, so just bear that in mind if you're checking yours that they could have been updated since just to save any time if you think they're wrong and start taking out the shims for no reason. So first we're going to unscrew the plug from the centre of the alternator cover. Try not to drop it like I just have. There is an o-ring in here that it says to replace um, but I've actually struggled to find that um, on the Motorworks website so I'll have another look. Um, but if not, if it looks in good enough condition, I'll probably just leave the one that I've got for now and then try and replace that at a, at a later date. So I'm now going to begin unscrewing the bolts from the valve cover and I'm going to do this in a criss-cross pattern as I go. So I'm just going to unscrew the last little bit by hand and in the Haynes manual it does say to check these rubber washers and to replace them if necessary. So let's try and get the valve cover off. So that's now been successfully removed and this is what it looks like inside the engine. So as you can see these valves are in different positions at the moment and I need to make sure that it's at top dead centre um, which you would do by putting a hex key into here and cranking it over so that these two sprockets here will line up so I'll try and shine the light so it's a bit easier for you to see but there are two marks on the sprockets two little lines and you want to make sure that they are completely in line to show that it's in top dead center before checking the valve clearances so the lines are now matching up and you also want to make sure that these holes in the sprocket are at the top. So first I'm going to check the exhaust valves. And here it starts at 0.25 and goes up to 0.33. So I've got my 0.25 valve gauge. And I will simply just slide that underneath. Okay, that's good news then. So that goes underneath. So now I have a 0.25 and a 0.05, making it 0.3. And the good news is that this doesn't want to go through at all on either of the exhaust valves. So that's good. So we know then that it is between 0.25 and 0.33 for the exhaust. So now on to the intakes. Um, which is between 0.03 and 0.11. So I'm going to start off with my 0.05 mil uh, and hope that that goes through. Okay, so good news here as well. So the 0.05 does go through. So we know the gap isn't going to be um, too small. So then I'm going to again use another gauge, work my way up and see how far we can go. So I've just tried 
0.15 and that doesn't want to go under the intake valves which is really good news so it looks like they are okay um, which is great because I didn't actually want to take the strings out and if it had come to that I definitely would have had to call on some help I think from a trusted friend so I'm going to make sure all these parts are really clean before I put them back on as well as the actual surface around here I don't need to do anything else with this I want to um, leave this as much as possible and I don't want anything falling in but yeah just clean around where the seal will be and then put it all back together and use the, the torque settings provided in the hand manual.